Hi, I'm going to show you how to do some clustering and Power BI and Python and some of the advantages of, of using uh, Python for your clustering. So let's take a look at the two visuals here. You can see we have a, a, a table here and we have our clusters and this has been created by Power BI. Let me just move this over a little bit so you can actually see the naming of the clusters. And then we have this scatter plot here, which also has clustering. Now, this is two types of clustering. For the scatter plot, this is a two dimensional clustering or a scatter plot clustering where we're taking uh, two dimensions. In this case, we're looking at a data set that is a shopping data set, which we have the customer ID, the annual income, age, and the spending score. And then we're able to create clusters based on uh, those dimensions. For the table, we are doing a um, multi-dimensional clustering, which means we're using all of these. And then for this one, we're just using those two dimensions. So let me just show you how that works. So I am actually going to eliminate uh, the clusters and one thing you know in Power BI once you create these clusters they are available to you as this little parameter or dimension in your data set and you can see in my model customers so if I go down and I delete that from the model you should see uh, that error pop up but don't worry we're gonna go back into that and fix that so then I'm going to delete the multi um, dimensional one so all we need to do is eliminate that and then we get our scatter plot and our table back. So rem let's do our sc scatter plot clustering first. So you know we have these two dimensions here which is age and spending score and what we want to be able to do is create a cluster. Now um, if you just to give you an idea to do this from scratch I'm just going to choose age and my spending score and you can see that automatically um, summarizes those two and all we need to do is bring in our customer ID into values to get that scatter plot back. If we hover back over and we bring in our um, ellipsis here and we click on find uh, clusters which is automatically find clusters you see we are given this um, window here where we can name our clusters and of course we could call this our shopping score age cluster we could talk about what's in it and we can also give the amount of clusters we want so let's let it automatically choose the clusters so I'm just going to click that and you can see what happens is we get three clusters. And if you notice that these clusters kind of look like blobs, that the reason for that is there is a center point here and the center point is going to determine how those blobs are created, how far away from those center points um, in the middle of those blobs. And that's a K-means type of clustering and I'll show you how to use that once we get into the python part now as you can see we have customer and customer id annual income age and spending score in our table now one dimension that we didn't bring in is gender so for for our gender uh, i actually clicked the wrong thing here so let's click into that and i'm going to click gender and you can see that what happens is we get our male and female there. Now if I say, okay, I wanna create a cluster, if I click into that and I say, hey, automatically find clusters for that multi-dimensional, because we're dealing with more dimensions, you can see we're given a number of fields exceeded. So the reason for that is that this is a um, string or a dimension that can't be broken down into a numerical value. Now there's two things we could do. We could turn this in zeros and ones and allow it to work there or we just remove it. But that means it's not going to be in our clustering consideration. So let's do it this way first and I'll show you how to do that in Python. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that and then go to automatically clusters. And you can see we get to name this. I'm going to call it multi-dimensional cluster. And then we could probably write the, oh, that should be the title here. And I click OK. And we should get a cluster here. So you can see the advantage of this is that once we run these two, we get these parameters or dimensions that we can use in our data, which we, we could segment things from. Maybe we bring in a filter um, and use those clusters. Now, the negative part of this is that um, this algorithm that is being used here um, in the report pane, that means when you get data in, Let's say you collect connect it to a live source, you're not going to be able to um, update it and you might get holes in your data. So I'm going to show you how to just quickly do this in Python. So it's running um, in your across your data and creating a new data set. And this is going to be a machine learning model unsupervised. And you're going to get very similar results for your multi-dimensional cluster. And I will also show you how to put in different algorithms and tweak it also. But the first thing we want to be able to do is open up a, um, a command prompt. So let me do that because we need to install a package. So I'm going to click that command prompt. I'm using Anaconda prompt. And then I'm going to install a package with um, called PyCarrot. And the way we install a package is with pip or pip install PyCarrot. Now this is already installed on my PC. So you're going to see a lot of things saying it's already satisfied. So we're good to go there. And this may take a while on your PC. So I'm going to go over to transform data. And I'm going to go to my mall customers here. And you can see I've already done that. Run the algorithm. So let me get rid of that so you can see what I have. So you can see we have all our dimensions here, gender, age, annual income. What we're going to do is now we're going to go over and import, I mean, transform this data. So we're going to transform. We're going to go to run Python script. And now we're going to put that machine learning algorithm into this and it's very easy it's a very easy code so it's something you can do very quickly so we install pycarrot so i'm going to say from pycarrot dot clustering import and then i want to import everything just because it's safer now i want to replace that data set and you can see that it says data set holds the input values so i'm going to say data set equals and then i'm just going to use this function called get clustering and then we have a, we close the function off. Now this function, I need to tell it what data to use. And remember, we it says data set holds the data set variable. So let's get that data set. So data equals data set. And then I'm just going to give it the model that I want to use. So I this by default you don't have to, but I want to use the similar same model that's in Power BI, so it's called k-means. And then we can even tell it the number of clusters we want. So you can do this in, in your report pane too with your clustering. So I'm going to use num clusters. And then I'm going to pass it three clusters. Now there is some science behind how you choose clusters, or you can let it automatically do it. Now, before I run this, I just want to show you, because we're using PyCarrot, there is a lot of different models to use. So you can see what we, the one I have highlighted here, we're using k-means, and that's the same philosophy around having that center point, and then we radiate out. And then we k-mos is a similar type of clustering. Now, these other clusterings will work based on your needs. And they also are much more flexible and not blob based. So if you have a different data set and you feel like your your model that is in Power BI is not working, you can use all of these just by going over to this section and specifying which one you want. So now I'm just going to click OK to run that. So that means we're using that K means 
unsupervised machine learning algorithm. So that means as you get new data, it will learn and alter those center points and give you a better clustering. And we, we said we're going to stick with three clustering. We could give it the automatic just by not using it. And then we're using the data set. So I'm going to click OK. Up oh, and it looks like I have an error in my code. Probably a misspelling. And because it's not Git clustering, it's actually Git clusters. So my mistake there. So the let's change that. Git clusters is the algorithm. So we use Git clusters. Uh, the function for that algorithm. So get clusters. So now that should run. So always read your errors. They will really be informative and tell you what you need to change. So you can see that ran successfully. All I need to do is open up that table now. And you can see we've been awarded with those clusters. Now this one starts at zero. And but you see we have the three clusters. Now there's a couple advantages. We could definitely change the name of this. So once we go and evaluate those clusters, we could name them different things. For example, I'm going to just close this for a moment. And that's the advantage of having it in your data. For example, if we go and we get our clusters and then we maybe want to turn that into a pivot table and we get the age as a, as a cluster. So now we can say if we wanted to get the annual income and we get the average for that. So now we can start to look at naming one of those clusters. So this is young and big money. So young spenders. I go here and I can just go and replace find cluster two in our data. And we can replace value. I'm going to call this young and rich. So you can see you can put a better naming that be a little bit more uh, digestible to your users. So I hope that shows you some of the advantage of using different algorithms and getting that data, uh, that machine learning algorithm running in your data. So you don't have to just use the report pane here. I hope that helps. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.